We are an educational nonprofit that uses our organic farm and our wilderness preserve to teach about environmental education and social justice. All of the programs we do here include experiential learning as the core element of both the farm environment where children can learn about where the food comes from, they can literally get their hands in the soil, they can help take care of the animals that are here. We have everything from cows and pigs and goats and sheep and chickens and all such things. And then we have 1,600 acres of wilderness preserve. We are an educational group that teaches kids about the marine environment and how they can become stewards and protect the environment that they're learning about. So after we get on the boat and um, have an introduction to um, the watershed and the water that we're going to be studying, so the first station would be the fishing station. Getting that very physical, hands-on experience and you know, seeing what you caught. They're identifying them using tools. At the hydrology station, we also talk about about how human trash and waste can affect the water. More things should be recycled or put to household hazardous waste where they can be dealt with in a safe way. Environmental Volunteers, a Bay Area nonprofit that promotes uh, environmental stewardship primarily with students in local schools. For the past 40 years, the Environmental Volunteers has delivered science programs we deliver a two-hour program. Some of our classrooms we take out on a follow-up field trip to a nature preserve. The Environmental Volunteers is a group of uh, dedicated people who uh, are committed to working with children such that they will learn about science, learn about their environment, and ultimately protect it. The program involves an uh, in-class component where volunteers and our staff go in to a classroom and orient kids to wetland ecosystems, the birds that would be found there, issues about recycling and pollution and everything you could think of that you would want to teach somebody about the environment. And then we load the kids up on a bus and we take them out to a wetland ecosystem and we take a look at real time what's really happening out in the ecosystem. We have a day camp program during the summer and we have an outreach program for students kindergarten through 12th grade who can come up and use our science lab. They're learning about nature, about natural sciences, using outdoor setting as a context for their learning. We are able to impart our sense of love of the environment and teach them about the plants and animals so that they go away from us with a new respect for them. and. They understand how important it is that they take care of them when they go home. In a classroom, you're so confined to those four walls, and especially with science, it's so nice to be outside. And I find that kids here really want to be here. They really want, want to learn as much as they can. They're like little sponges. And sometimes in the classroom, it felt like I was really forcing it onto them. Trying to learn science, or really any interactive subject out of a book, is like trying to learn how to play the violin out of a book. It's just not effective. And so when we're able to bring hands-on, place-based programs to students that complement and support what the teachers are teaching in the classroom, the teachers tell us, hands down, that it makes the learning come alive. And you can see that in the faces of students. I think experiential learning is way better than sitting behind the desk. In a day of uh, testing or in this age of testing where children have to do a lot of you know, multiple choice and, and drilling, that kind of thing, um, it's definitely important to bring these kind of interactive experiences into the classrooms. As we looked at this district and we saw some of these kids are getting programs if they happen to have a teacher who champions that sort of thing and, and takes the initiative. Other kids 
aren't. Some kids get it one year and not another year. There's a lot of inequity. Our students cannot afford to put over the five to 13, 15 dollars that it takes to get a bus, go to a program, pay for the program to happen. We would be lost to just be digging into the textbook. Since we have, you know, about half free and reduced lunch, children that are of low income, and a variety of students who don't have many experiences outside of the city. Kids in, in our area get very little hands-on science experience or one-on-one -on -one or first-hand science experience. As a foundation, I see proposals from, from nonprofit organizations all the time. It's really difficult to choose one field trip over another field trip to fund. Most of the time, most of us deliver one-off programs. We go into the classroom, we deliver one program, and we say goodbye. How much educational gain is there to a one-off two-hour program? A teacher may look for a field trip or a community activity to help students meet a particular education content standard. That might be a classroom visit by a community expert, or a field trip to a local nonprofit organic farm, or a boat excursion. The challenge for the teacher is how to find the right program to meet his or her needs. For the nonprofit, it's how to fund these trips for under resourced schools and demonstrate that their single touch field trip results in the kind of educational impact that funders and school administrators demand. With the Education by Nature model, any teacher can visit a single website and easily search by grade level, topic, and content standards to find, request, and register for the multiple programs available in the local community. The nonprofits collaborate to leverage each of their independent programs, building upon each other's work, and reinforcing concepts in a multiple touch delivery model. Nonprofits can, for the first time, see a service delivery map a comprehensive picture of which classrooms are receiving services and where there are gaps. Grant makers find value on many levels and can support jointly submitted proposals and larger projects with greater accountability. time they come, I always get excited. We came up with $100,000 for our first two-phase program and now we have this subsidy uh, for busing for, for all of these kids that, that can go on field trips. Instead of like someone telling you what it's like, you get to ex actually experience what it feels like to be out here by yourself. That, that this has opened up a world of funding opportunities that we would not have had um, if we were not collaborating. What we'll be able to say is that students who participate in these programs have increased their science achievement as measured by fifth grade science test scores, as well as these students have increased their environmental awareness and their stewardship behaviors. Before Science by Nature, our students in fifth grade science on the CST, California State Standards Test, were at 40% proficient. So 40% of our students showed that they understood the content in the curriculum. Now, our students are at 62% proficiency and above. I get to learn better because I, I get to see and touch and feel. As a result of participating in the collaborative, YSI was able to achieve one of its strategic objectives, which was to reach more at-risk kids, more Title I kids on free and reduced lunch program. We were able to do that because of the leverage of the partnership as well as the funding that came with that partnership. The services that were available in the region were uncoordinated previously. Each program was excellent and each program was contents-based, but having a teacher be able to access all of those programs and be able to actually quantify the results that were coming out of those programs that didn't exist before Science by Nature. Us working together, I think we have improved um, all of our programs and have all been able to increase the number of students that we can get involved with um, at a reduced cost. What I really like is not having to have a, these schools can afford to pay, 
these maybe we can fundraise for scholarships, maybe we can't, rather than the program starts with an implicit assumption, everybody will participate and everybody will participate equally. It's perfectly uh, in line with what we do in this district, um, really providing a excellent education to all students. I was able to sponsor two underserved classes to go out on these boat field trips. I think if I have impacted any of them in any way, I just that's the greatest feeling in the world. It's simply taking whatever is in the area and leveraging it all together. Each nonprofit does exactly what it loves to do, exactly what it's always done, just better together. I would like to, I would thank them if they could do another one like this. Thank you for teaching me all this useful information that I might need to know when I grow up. By collaborating with other nonprofits that are teaching environmental education, we're able to connect that trip to the mountains, to that trip to the farm, to the trip to the beach or on the bay, and how these communities are all connected and how we treat one affects all of them. And it stays with them forever just critical to give these kids these opportunities. It really allows children to learn in a fun and wonderful way. really does way. improve their science achievement. I couldn't think of anything I'd be involved in that would make me more proud. I am really proud to be part of this collaborative. Integrating these types of programs more into the school day is effective. For more kids to get better experience, to become more connected with nature, to become the stewards of the future we We are need. changing the way that we provide science and environmental education. And if this can be a model for other schools to reach as many students as possible and reach them with multiple touches over time. Be the model for collaborative wherever anybody wants to do this work. See this collaboration as a model for the rest of the nation. We obviously believe that all children deserve, in fact, need these kind of opportunities if we're going to make a better world. So the more you can have the community involved in what you do, the better it's going to Provide be. Provide such strength to the community. Create an impact much greater than any of us could do on our own. Collaborate on things that will help better our community and continue to make a better this world. This makes a difference at the most basic and important level of impacting our kids. Throughout the nation, we can have collaborations all over to reach as many kids as possible. Mm -hmm.